In this video, I'm gonna chat about alignment and clearance planes. So we're using a part I'm gonna call mill part one. I'll put a drawing up on the screen. It's pretty simple. This part doesn't have any datums, okay? So it's just coordinate, regular dimensions, plus or minus. We're gonna use what's known as an implied datum to get our alignment. So on the part, the top surface, we'll consider our datum A, our primary datum. And then we'll pick the two sides. If you can see the part right here, where all the dimensions come from as our other references. So we're actually not gonna use planes, we'll use 2D lines, but I'll show you that in just one second on the computer. What an alignment does is take the coordinate system from the machine home and put it on your part. So all of the measurements on the part need to come from somewhere. You gotta tell the machine where the zero is. Depending on the part, it could be in the middle of the part where all the dimensions come from. It could be on a corner. It could be in the, the middle of the side of the part, just depending on usually the datum scheme, but in this case, where the actual dimensions come from. So on the screen, I've got what we're gonna have when we finish. So if you notice, there's a, a triad that's gonna be on the top left upper corner of the part right here where all of our dimensions come from. It's really difficult to see on the computer screen because when you take features with the probe, it's not gonna give you a solid part, okay? It's just gonna give you kind of lines out in space. You can see we've got three features. We've got a plane and two 2D lines, okay? So that gives us enough information to establish the origin for all of our measurements. So we got a plane, 2D line one, 2D line two, and our triad right here. We don't have, we have one characteristic. We'll check for flatness just for fun. And then our clearance planes are gonna surround the part and the fixtures so the machine doesn't smash into them when it's going through its program. So I'm gonna start a brand new measurement plan. It's a good idea to name your measurement plan and save it, so I'll do that. So go to File, Save As, and I'll call this Mill Part 1, okay? That way if there's a power outage, you know, we got the program right there. I'll go to base start alignment. It'll be yellow. It's right here. I'm going to hit OK. We're going to create a new alignment. And there's a bunch of different ways to do it. I'm going to show you one. Try to follow the steps as closely as you can. I got my piece fixture down here. It's not going anywhere. I got the clamps on the two corners so it shouldn't get in the way of our actual probing. I'm going to drive the machine. I want to put the probe in the middle of the four holes on the part. And if you can't see it here, I'll put a graphic up there for you. And I'm gonna take a point by driving straight down. When it beeps, I know I got a point, I'll drive straight off. Now, I'm gonna go to the right and to the same kind of place symmetrically in between those four holes. I'll take another point, same thing, go up, now I'm gonna go straight down. And you see what I'm getting at? I'm gonna kind of draw a square here. Go up, over, go down, and then back where I started. So why did I do it in that particular way? Well, the machine is gonna to default to what's known as scanning. So when it actually runs the program, it's not going to go beep, beep, beep and take four points. It's gonna drag the probe across the part. Now, what you know, path does it take? It's gonna follow the points that you took. So you'll see when we run the program, it's gonna press down right here and it's gonna drag the probe to connect those dots. So if I had taken a point right here and then you know, across a hole, it would drag, drop into the hole, and then the program would stop, okay? It wouldn't crash the machine, it just wouldn't get a good reading. So we want to pay attention to where we probe. Now in the future, we're gonna go into the measurement strategy and we can do all sorts of crazy stuff, but this is just for your basic alignment. So we're happy. On the screen, it's gonna give us a bunch of numbers we don't really care about. 
I'm gonna hit OK. So notice it's plane one. It adds it to spatial rotation. So spatial rotation controls the basic rotation of your part. It's usually the biggest surface rectangular feature. It'll be that top plane or the largest plane on the part. Now, planar rotation. So all the computer knows about right now is there's a plane, okay? We just told it about a plane. So this part would be free to spin. We wanna lock it in rotation. What we're gonna do is take a 2D line on this side of the part, and that's going to lock the part, okay? So I'm gonna drive it over here. I'm gonna move down. I'll try to aim for the kind of the middle of the part. I want the probe to drag on the table, but I want it to be too high, right in the middle. I'm gonna drive to the right, take a point. Now I'm not gonna move the up and the down, okay? Only use the right joystick. So I'm just gonna drive up here. I'm gonna take one more point, okay? And then drive straight off to the left. Now you gotta be careful here. If you took another point and you move the joystick up, it'll take a plane. Well, what you want is a 2D line. Now you're always gonna get a 2D line with two points, but if you had moved it up and taken a line, it could be tilted, which could give you weird results. So you want the line to be parallel with that uh, top plane. So we got a 2D line. We don't really need to do anything with this. Hit okay. Now that's gonna give us our X origin as well. So we're saying all the measurements come in the X direction from here. It's just like the drawing, right? So the last thing we need is our Y origin. So where do all the measurements come in the Y direction? They come from this plane right here. So again, we'll do a 2D line. One point, drive straight off, move over here, take one more point, okay? Move it up, I'm gonna hit okay. If you notice, all the boxes are filled and our coordinate system is right where it should be, okay? It's a little tricky to see without, you know, a solid model there, but you see the line, the line, and the plane up here, and you can hold the right mouse button to move around, all right? Go ahead, hit okay. Uh, the next thing we need to do is our clearance planes. The program won't run until you tell the machine where the clearance planes are. So normally the clearance planes are just a little away from the part. That's where the probe is going to naturally go if you don't tell it anything different. So if you set a clearance plane in the Z direction an inch above the part, when it's finished with its probing of that plane, the probe is gonna go one inch above the part and then go to its next move. Same thing, if you set a clearance plane an eighth of an inch away from this surface. When it finishes taking that feature, it'll move an eighth of an inch away, and then it'll do its next move, okay? So the clearance planes are just a reference point for where the probe is gonna go after it takes readings. Now, like everything else, there's way more customization you can do, but for this particular project, just follow what I'm doing, okay? I'm gonna move the probe up and out of the way. I'm gonna click on the clearance planes. Now this is the fun part. You get to use the button on the top of the joystick. Now, just to be safe, I wanna make sure the probe always goes above my fixturing, right? So what I'll do is drive over here and get about a quarter inch above my fixtures. And I can drive around. It's not gonna hit the part or the fixtures. So I'm gonna hit that top button, and that's my Z plus clearance plane. You can see the number in there, uh, plus one inch. Now you could type these in as well if you just knew them offhand. Now the next is gonna be our X plus. Again, I'm gonna move outside of my fixture. I'm gonna hit that top button. The next is Y plus. So I'm gonna move outside of those fixtures and then move out. The next is X minus. Make sure I'm to this side of that fixture and the part. And then that, and then come down here to get 
the Y minus. This one could be a little closer because there's no fixtures. Hit that top button. So I can zoom out over here and the probe will always move to those clearance planes like a safety box, right? You don't need to do anything for the Z minus. You can just hit OK and just answer no to the update clearance plane settings for a defined feature for now. That's really all we need for the alignment and the clearance plane, but let me do one uh, characteristic so we can watch the program run. So I'm gonna do a flatness. So I'll go here, I'm gonna double click it, feature, choose that plane one, hit OK. And I'll give it a tolerance just for fun. Now I'm gonna go to run. If it isn't checked, check the clear existing results box. And we're gonna go to the name of your program for the base alignment. What this does is when you give it the name of your program, it's gonna run that alignment. If you use current alignment, it's just gonna go check the features, right? It's not really gonna bother doing an alignment. You don't wanna do that if you're putting a new part on the table and running a program again. It would be okay in this situation because the part hasn't moved, but it's a good habit to just run the alignment anyway. Normally, it's gonna be checking the alignment features are gonna be features you're checking anyway, so the computer's not doing extra work doing the alignment, okay? So, I hit start, and I'm gonna move my probe out of the way. I'm gonna hit start and just let it do its thing, All right? So it's gonna drive down, it'll press into the part, and it's gonna move nice and slow in a square. So at this point, it's scanning. It's taking a whole bunch of points. Now you can program how many points it's gonna take. You can tell it to take a point every you know, tenth of an inch or every uh, one inch or whatever. It can take thousands of points and uh, one go around. So when you're running a program for the first time, it's a good idea to keep your finger on the speed wheel to make sure it's not gonna crash into anything. The most dangerous portion of the program is when it's moving to a different feature, okay? So you can let it go real slow, make sure it's doing what it's supposed to, and then let it run, okay? So when it gets toward the end of this feature, I might hold this and make sure I'm ready to stop the machine if it needs to. Okay, so that's it. We did a successful alignment clearance plane. We checked one feature, the flatness, so it looks like it's checked out. So that's it for this video. Next time we'll go over uh, actually getting characteristics back and checking some of these holes and making sure the part is actually correct. But you can't do any of that without getting your alignment and your clearance planes set. So if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. I'll have more of these CMM videos coming soon.